morning. morning. It's wonderful to see you here on this uh, June 20th um, and to be with us here at Sherwood Episcopal Church. I welcome those who are present and I also welcome those who are watching us virtually. It is a pleasure to have both communities. We are one body and um, with Christ. Just a few announcements before we begin our service. Um, I don't know if you have noticed, but for the last two Sundays, we have been treated to some beautiful, beautiful music. And this will continue throughout the summer. Thanks to Greg and Cassidy, they will be giving us their gifts of organ and of voice and sharing with us and the greater community the gifts that they have. And so please enjoy it and also pay attention to some of the the information that is written about the pieces of music that they sing on a particular Sunday. There's some good history behind all of that, and um, I commend you to read that. Um, also, we have, uh, we will be one more communion by the Red Door. Um, it is clear that now we are offering communion here, that the need for it is not necessary. If in the future or you feel it is necessary, give me a call um, and we will certainly amend it. But at this point, it is looking as if we just need to have communion here. We invite you. Um, and if you would like to receive communion but are not comfortable coming, please call me and I would be more than happy to bring some communion to you in your home. Also today, we are recognizing Juneteenth and um, I believe that we will have some a spiritual that will be done or sung by Cassidy um, during, uh, as I set the table um, at, the, at the offering. So please pay attention to that. And there is the regathering update. Um, as of today, no one is required to sign up, though we encourage you to so we can keep tabs on uh, contact tracing. Uh, we will continue to wear our masks. Um, and you can basically sit where you want. We encourage you to sit in the pews with books, uh, the hymnal and uh, the Book of Common Prayer. And that helps to keep us spaced out and allows me to bring communion down to you. Because um, at this point, we're still doing communion, bringing communion down. And also a huge thanks to uh, Lowe's for giving away masks and wipes. We will be the recipient of some of that but we're gonna also work with um, Loaves and Fishes and Cockeysville Middle School to see if they could benefit from those as well uh, for their supplies. And I also amend you to look at the helping one of our members of our congregation who passed away this last year, Jean Goldsmith. We, um, I commend you to look at a way to honor her and her commitment to this congregation, commitment to her practice and love of music, and commitment to her God. She certainly added a tremendous amount to our community over the many years. And there will be an op there's an opportunity now for us to thank her um, by contributing uh, for a, a marker for her grave. So I hope that you will participate in that if you are able. And that is about it. Let us take a few moments to settle our minds and our spirits open our hearts to hearing God and the music that we hear and the scriptures and the prayers that we raise up. I'm so glad you're here with us today. Thank you.
service begins on page two of our bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. first reading is from Samuel. David said to Saul, let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, the Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag. In the pouch, his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. 
the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, you come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down and cut off your head and I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. The word of the Lord. The Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 9 verses 9 through 20. We will read responsibly by whole verse. The Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. Those who know your name will put your trust in you, for you never forsake those who seek you, O Lord. Sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Proclaim to the peoples the things he has done. The avenger of blood will remember them. He will not forget the cry of the afflicted. Have pity on me, O Lord. See the misery I suffer from those who hate me. O you who lift me up from the gate of death. And rejoice in your salvation in the gates of the city of Zion. The ungodly have fallen into the pit they dug, and in the snare they set is their own foot caught. The Lord is known for his acts of justice. The wicked are trapped in the works of their own hands. The wicked shall be given over to the grave and also all the people that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Rise up, O Lord, let not the ungodly have the upper hand. Let them be judged before you. Put fear upon them, O Lord. Let the ungodly know the but mortal. gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go across to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, are you, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord.
I speak in the name of one creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. What storms are raging in your life? Or maybe not your life, but the life of someone you love. Or perhaps things are calm right now, but you have experienced a few storms in your lifetime and have learned not to discount those dis difficult times. We have all had small and large waves rock our individual boats, the larger boats of the church, of our community, the nation, and even the world. There, there seems today to be many raging storms on all fronts, so much so I am sure that you have muttered under your breath, where is God in all of this? We easily could sound like the disciples if we aren't careful, and maybe we already have. I ask you this question about storms in your life because of Mark's gospel reading. It is a familiar lesson, one that we could easily dismiss, thinking that the disciples really just don't have a clue. But can we really assume that? Isn't it often the case when our life is turned upside down by challenges that we didn't anticipate, a difficult diagnosis, a loss of a loved one, financial troubles, a pandemic, that we question God's presence? Don't we sometimes respond in fear and despair? Don't we sometimes just retreat? Or do we expect God to follow our specific prayers that we fail to possess, yet we fail to possess the quiet confidence that God is with us even in the storms of our lives? Today's gospel reading is a continuation of Jesus' travels and ministry in Galilee. He has been working hard, and I am sure he welcomed the isolation of the boat. A little peace in what had been a lot of chaos and excitement. Crowds demanded his attention. Others feared his authority and threatened him. Some even called him crazy. Yes, a lot was pressing down on Jesus that evening, so going to the other side gave him and his traveling companions perhaps a little peace. But it sure didn't last long, did it? A storm arose and the boat began to take on water. Clearly the waters were wild because the disciples were experienced fishermen and they were terrified. But Jesus was fast asleep at the stern, oblivious to all that was going on around him. He clearly had faith had faith in his father and perhaps even the disciples who were the experienced fishermen. He remained asleep until one of the disciples woke him and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He then stood up and rebuked the storm. He had done it before, hadn't he, when he rebuked the unclean spirit from the man in the synagogue earlier in Mark. Once things turned quiet and serene, Jesus turned his disciple, to his disciples and asked, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? Now, Jesus wasn't challenging their courage, as we might suspect. Jesus was challenging their trust in him and his father. He was frustrated, maybe even surprised, because he had been speaking to them privately, about the full meaning of the parables, surely they must have gained a deeper understanding of God's consistent presence in their lives. But once the waters were calm, they didn't turn to him and say thank you and sit back and relax. The reading states that they were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now, I might share with you a more authentic translation in other Bibles, such as the King James Version stated, they 
They feared exceedingly. There was no awe. There was no wonder. There was great fear and alarm. Because in ancient times, the mythology surrounding stormy seas and high winds was that of the devil and other demons that only God could subdue. Their question, who could this be, pushed against all their human sensibilities that they just witnessed God in Jesus calming the storms. Now, the first obvious message here is that God is always with us, even in the raging storms of our lives. His love and power can help us overcome our biggest fears and challenges. He doesn't shrink before evil or raging seas. His loving power is far greater than any other powers that may ravage our body, ravage our mind or spirit. We must try trust in this promise and sometimes it's just difficult to do especially when we feel threatened and vulnerable it is a comfort for our spirits when we firmly believe God is with us in the storms of our lives but I also want us to look at the story from a very different angle not a vantage point of being in a dark place but from a position when you have voluntarily come face to face with a raging storm. Raging storms that aren't yours to fight or you could easily ignore or put off for a more convenient time. These are the storms of broken relationships that need mending, justices that need correcting, faith that perhaps needs deepening, love, that needs sharing, and most of all, truth that needs telling. These types of storms, if you will, don't come into our lives knocking us off our feet. These st storms are subtle and insidious. They st seep into our spirit and heart, depleting us, or the larger spirit of the community, without loud winds of st or stormy seas, but with equal veracity. These types of storms require us to dig deep within our soul in order for us to confront what is before us. Yesterday, June 19th, marked the 156th anniversary of the day slaves in Galveston, Texas, were told that they were free. This has become known as June Teeth. 10th melding of the month and the day of this important date. General Granger's announcement to those in Galveston, Texas, came more than a two and a half years after President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863, officially freeing all enslaved African Americans. As I reflect on the significance of that day, I can't help but wonder what mu it must have been like for those who had only known the life of chattel slavery to be told that they were free forever. No doubt there was great joy and relief, but I also wonder, were they frightened? They didn't know what lay ahead of them, Deep within their soul, they must have known old beliefs, racial prejudices can't be erased with the stroke of a pen or the announcement of a proclamation. Deep-seated hatred and mistrust in the souls of individuals, in the souls of a community or a nation are very difficult to dismantle. Granting equity to all human beings often threatens those who hold the supposed power. And it was the same for the leaders of Jesus' time. They feared the disruption of the status quo that kept them in authority. Within a few short chapters of Mark, the leaders were already conspiring to kill him. So I imagine that those newly freed people looked into their future 
that didn't necessarily reflect calm seas and blue skies, but possibly a raging storm. And I wonder, would they dare to enter the fray of that raging storm, or, were there, or would their free fear cause them to sh shrink back into the role that they had only known for their whole life, that of a slave? What a brave people they were and still are because they didn't retreat despite their fears and they still haven't. And we should join them 156 years later continuing the cause for racial justice. And so I wonder again as Christians when we ourselves find ourselves standing before evil do we stand to face it down, or do we back away from the edge of a challenging and overwhelming situation? I wonder what keeps you, what keeps me from the edges. Is it our internal fear of the unknown that keeps us from failing to live out our call as Christians? It is difficult to venture into unknown territory. But this is where we, as a people of faith, must venture. We aren't to sit in a space that keeps us content and safe. Otherwise, our faith becomes stagnant, mundane, and self-serving. We are all called to enter the fray in order to bring peace to others despite our own internal fears, truly trusting that the presence of our loving God will hold us and guide us as we step forward into something even when we can't see what lays before us. Now this can be done by all of us, regardless of our age and our position in life. It may simply be and mean picking up the phone to reach out to someone that you have conveniently ignored for some time it may be your mature voice, wise from years of experience, that needs to speak lovingly to a member of a younger generation seeking guidance in a sea of their own confusion. It may be sitting with someone who has been ostracized and put aside and to sit with them so that they know they are not alone. It may be speaking truth to the racial injustices that you see played out before you or that you yourself committed. Or it may be the first step to deepening your faith, asking questions that you have always wanted to ask but you were so afraid to ask because you didn't know how people would interpret them. These are the storms that form around us, lurking from a distance so that we can easily turn our back and push them away, allowing us to think that they aren't as powerful as the other storms in our lives. But in a way, they are more powerful and will easily cause as much havoc on our bodies and our souls. Jesus was continually, continually showing his followers and us today that God's kingdom is here. It is here before us. It is a kingdom for all people, regardless of who they are, the color of their skin, their place in life, even the sins that they have committed. All are invited to step into the boat of God's kingdom, even you and even me. And the choice is ours. Are you ready to trust that what rages around us can ultimately be calmed by God's redeeming love? I certainly hope so, because the kingdom of God actually depends upon it. Amen. And now let us stand as we are able to recite Nicene Creed.
found on page six of your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. For this town of Cockeysville, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. We especially pray for those impacted by COVID-19, as well as those on our parish prayer list. Sally, Debbie, Shannon, Jeff and Kim, Norma, Margaret, Ed, Laura, Joyce, Christine, Mike and his family, Kendall, Marge, Sarah, Joe, Gail, Steve W, Michelle, Joe G, Jay, Stephen Debbie, Janetta, Christina, Khalil, Charles, Samantha, Courtney, Debbie H, Danny, Sandy and Jack, Virginia, Jackie, Susie H, the Alexander family, Kiernan and Colleen, Linda P, Timothy, Barbara Y, Jane, Bill H, Margaret S, Jackie and Rick, Lewis and David D. Lord, for the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the blessings of this life, especially for those celebrating birthdays, including Bud, as well as anniversaries, including Bill and Jean, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. 
that we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord in the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, as you are able to either kneel or stand, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another in peace and our friends who are visiting virtually. Two things that I forgot to mention, um, or actually three things. Uh, number one, happy Father's Day to all the men in our lives. I am a firm believer whether you had your own children or not, fathers and men play a large role in the lives of all of us. And so you may be a father to some even though you may not be a blood father. So happy Father's Day, and we will be celebrating later today with our family, and I hope that you can do the same with friends and family as well. Also, Karen Mercer, our seminarian, is under the weather. So keep her in your prayers. She sends her wishes today, and she's very disappointed that she can't be with us, but I believe she is watching us safely from her home. And then next Sunday, we have the privilege of our other seminarian, who is here with us today, Kathleen Chato. She will be our preacher, and I welcome her to the pulpit. It gives me a little break. It gives you a huge break, so you don't always really have to hear me talking. Um, and we get to hear her gifts of preaching. So um, don't, don't shy. Come back next Sunday and enjoy her sermon. So thank you, Kathleen. And now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image, and you called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
the world refreshed and renewed. Let us reaffirm our commitment to our mission as a congregation, saying together, God commands us to enthusiastically cast open our doors to embrace all, impacting lives through bold service, no exception. And now let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.